Good morning and welcome to our devotion as we begin our Monday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This morning we'll consider Luke 6, verse 36. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. The mercy of God the Christian enjoys is the first thing that must move him to be merciful to his erring, sinful, and thirsty neighbor. For that reason, in our text, Jesus bases his exhortation to be merciful on the Father's mercy. Whoever is a true Christian, a blessed child of God, did not become one by his own merit, but by God's incomprehensible compassion alone. For if God were only righteous and not merciful, no one could be saved. Because a Christian has God's grace, he cannot maintain that he is better than those without God's grace and still mired in their sins. Instead, he must confess that although he is the greatest of sinners, God accepted him and out of pure and free grace for Christ's sake made him his child. Whoever thinks he can become a Christian by some other means is not yet a Christian. Being a Christian can never be separated from being merciful. Whatever other characteristics are found in the Christian, they are invalid if he lacks mercy. He can be weak in knowledge, weak in overcoming the world, weak in restraining his behavior, and weak in confidence, yet he can stand in the faith. But it is impossible for God's grace to have dawned on a person who is unmerciful. Whoever has experienced the bottomless love of God in Christ knows that his sins are forgiven and that out of his free grace, God made him his blessed child. The heart of such a person has to be moved and softened by this knowledge. Experiencing the mercy of God makes the stony heart sensitive and the natural stubborn disposition easily pliable. Through grace, a person who is cruel by nature becomes compassionate. One who is very reserved becomes open for every trial. The hardened soul is transformed into wax-like softness, and the lion is turned into a lamb. A Christian knows that by God's mercy he is free from judgment. Therefore, he cannot judge his fellow sinner lovelessly. A Christian also knows that by God's mercy he is free from damnation. Therefore, he cannot condemn his fellow sinner. A Christian realizes that by God's mercy, all of his sins are forgiven. Therefore, he cannot remain unreconciled to those who have sinned against him. A Christian understands that out of his unfathomable compassion, God gave him his dear son, righteousness, heaven, and eternal life. Therefore, he cannot close his heart and hand to his thirsty neighbor. A Christian knows that not a moment goes by in which he does not offend God anew with his sins. He is therefore in need of God's mercy at every moment, and he richly enjoys it. For this reason, his heart is always like a broken vessel, and false courage is removed from him. He can no longer be obstinate toward his neighbor. Tenderness dwells in his soul and does not allow him to provoke or grieve another willfully. He would rather hurt himself than injure another. Even the world can readily see that Christians are not vindictive. Instead, they have in their hearts goodwill toward everyone. If a Christian lets himself be carried along to an unmerciful judgment, he very quickly feels inside how greatly he has sinned and is ashamed of himself. With contrition, he comes to God and laments, how he has made himself so unworthy of God's mercy. He humbly asks for new grace, then watches more earnestly and carefully over his evil heart. 
let us not deceive ourselves. If we are Christians, we are children of God, and thus will direct our minds toward the Heavenly Father and show mercy to our neighbor. If we do not do this, we are not yet Christians. As Christ says, he who has been forgiven much also loves much. And so we pray. Forgive our sins, Lord, we implore. Remove from us their burden sore. As we their trespasses forgive, who by offenses us do grieve. Thus let us dwell in charity and serve our neighbor willingly. Amen. We also pray, Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together in prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you again for joining us for our devotion. The Lord bless you all throughout the day ahead.